Our mission at Strange Loop is to create a virtual world for every classroom. So what that means is that we're creating these worlds that have this context for everything you're learning in a classroom. So your skills matter in this world. If you're learning about science, you need to use that science inside of this world to succeed. So here's the scientific data page and it has a map and various graphs and the teacher will be able to use this as well as the students to investigate various things going on on the, on the world. And these are social worlds where you're interacting with your friends, you're building together, you care about the outcome of it. So one of our goals with these projects is to really involve the teacher in them. They're actually uh, really part of the experience the students are having, they're guiding them with it. Here's the student progress area. It'll have the list of the class, an overall progress bar, and it shows what they're doing in the game. So the teacher's actually able to see through the social conversations, through the interactions that are happening between the students in the game, and the system will provide uh, worksheets that are based on this. So if students are facing, say, extinction of a species, you'll get a worksheet that examines the food sources of the species. So one of them is on animal populations and it gives a map and a graph about animal populations and some questions for students about it and the other one's about plant populations. The teacher can edit this and change it however they want and when they're ready they can click print. So assessment is something that we've really thought about for ECO and we're really interested in taking it beyond kind of the surface level metrics of how long do people play, how many questions do they get right, kind of basic multiple choice stuff, we wanted, we really wanted to get it deeper to that. We wanted to get an analysis of how students are interacting with each other, with the world, what they're experiencing, and to collect this passively rather than actively. You're, you're not completing multiple choice tests. You're not doing surveys. It's actually analyzing what players are naturally doing in the game. We take all this data that's generated by this world and we use natural language processing techniques to extract the highlights from it, to extract what players are doing, how they're making decisions with each other, where the conflicts are coming up, and how they're using science, how they're using STEM skills in order to get past these things. So the main tool is gonna to be the current events page. And from here, it'll be auto-populated with uh, events that happen in the game. For example, here you can see there's a mass animal population decrease. It's getting close to extinction numbers and it'll give them a graph and it'll quote the students polling from their chat. So this technology focuses on looking at dynamics that are happening between the students, between students in the world, uh, looking at conversations they have, looking at arguments they're putting forward to each other, and uh, connecting the dots between those. The students are able to analyze the data of what's happening in the game, uh, and they use that to draw conclusions. So they can look at the, the population rates, they can look at the pollution rates, they can look at what's going on, how things are changing, and what impact players are having on it. And not only can they work to understand what's going on here, but they're actually taking actions on those conclusions. They're using what they found in the data to argue what should be done as they're creating policy, they're forming a government that the that players decide what should happen. And that's all based from the scientific data that they've gained from this world. A lot of these skills that are needed in our games are skills that students are really gonna need in the future. These 21st century skills like leadership and collaboration, uh, scientific argumentation, looking at data, arguing it with your peers, really self-driving your learning, pushing yourself with what you want to pursue. And if a game can inspire students to, to do that, to give this answer to when am I going to use this, I think that's an incredibly powerful thing.